Hello, everybody, to this week's uh, developer session. Uh, we have this week on the, yeah, we're getting very close to the DAO launch, uh, luckily. And uh, one second, I had uh, my uh, playback on YouTube as well enabled. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we're getting <clears throat> uh, close to the DAO launch. So that will be the focus on this session. And I want to give you a little bit of an overview about important uh, feature which got added recently about quickly just an update about the new trade protocol status. Um, uh, it was basically on our agenda to uh, to have a, a review and a discussion about the tech spec and it was delayed. I want to give you a little bit of background and about uh, the next releases and the roadmap to the launch, uh, to the DAO launch. And then if we still have time, uh, I started a preparations uh, yeah, doc for to-do list basically are <clears throat> where we uh, where we edit uh, all the to-dos uh, on different areas like development side, organizational side, infrastructure side and so on uh, <clears throat> for the DAO launch and uh, maybe hope everybody has time to have a look to this and add anything if anything is missing <clears throat> and if time permits, maybe we can discuss uh, about this as well. Otherwise, I think we can postpone it to smaller calls um, with concrete with the concrete uh, contributor who is working on something. <coughs> so maybe I start with a quick overview, which is not that related directly uh, regarding the new trade protocol. <coughs> there, uh, yeah, there was uh, uh, Nyman and uh, Craig <coughs> who uh, started to work on this a few months ago. Uh, unfortunately, Craig got serious health issues with his back <clears throat> and he's still not back to work, so he need to recover with this. And I have not talked with him directly, but with Nyman, and he told me that it's not very likely that he can join full force uh, soon again. So we cannot really count on their um, developer force <clears throat> uh, and we have to reshuffle. Uh, we reshift their um, resources and so on. At the moment, we don't have another developer who could take over this project. So probably it will. I have to take it up uh, once the DAO is live. I mean, the DAO has the highest priority at the moment, so I will not uh, focus on this at all. But as soon as we are live and everything is good, uh, it will become my high prior task. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we wanted to get this tax back. Naiman has uh, worked, continued to work on the tax back, and it was close to final. Uh, we just decided because they will not work on this as a team anymore. Um, and when I work on it, I will write the tax back for myself. I don't need somebody else to write me a tax back. So it doesn't make sense that uh, he spends more effort on this. And uh, yeah, it's just more efficient when I do it than myself. So, <clears throat> and I will not have time to. Uh, work on this so there will not be a tech spec uh, before we are really good with the uh, DAO launch. I could still in the net one of the next uh, dev sessions when there is time can give a little bit of an overview. There have been a few important changes, especially regarding the arbitration. The arbitration <coughs> was planned initially to get cut off completely, uh, but then we decided that's maybe too uh, radical. Uh, so we found a, a solution to uh, to support arbitration system option on an optional basis and try to fade it out over time. <clears throat> but more overview about all this in one of the next uh, developer sessions. So it will be just that I explain it what I know and what I have in the brain. I mean, there's a basic kind of tech spec there, but it's not updated with these new changes and so on. <clears throat> so it will not be this real review where I ask everybody to really have a close uh, detailed look on it because yeah, we don't have the the documents for this. Beside that, uh, yeah, I want to give you an overview about this uh, new feature with this, uh, you have probably seen it when you run from source code in the latest master, it's already out. There is a new tab <coughs> where you get basically uh, the network consensus or monitoring about your data compared to other data, uh, mainly from seed nodes, but also from other data from other nodes with whom you are connected. Uh, <coughs> that should help us to detect any uh, consensus issues. So if any node is out of consensus with any other node, it will be detected. The way how it works, we have, we have basically two different areas of important data for the consensus. <clears throat> One is the data which is derived from the Bitcoin uh, blockchain, 
and the other data is derived from the peer-to-peer -peer network data, which is uh, the proposal data and the blind vote data. <clears throat> And especially those data, they are not guaranteed that they arrive at every peer. So there could be, as it's a basically expected behavior that it can be, <coughs> that some of this data is not um, distributed to all. And we still need to get to a consensus in such situation. Uh, and to, yeah, to really see the full state of a local node and can be able to compare it with any other node, uh, I added a, a chain hash uh, or hash chain. It's basically it takes a hash of your full DAO state. So there's one main model for the DAO, which is called DAO state. And um, we made it now deterministic. So all the data sets collections there are now sorted deterministically so that everybody, <clears throat> when you create a hash from the whole uh, data model, that uh, this hash is deterministically uh, the same for everybody. This hash uh, or this data change with every block. So with every block, there can be a new, yeah, new transactions. There can be changes from the uh, governance uh, side. There can be new proposals or new votes or the vote result. <coughs> and all of this has influence on the DAO state. <coughs> but it happens always when a new block arrives, then the block gets passed first, and then uh, some other consensus code is uh, executed. And when this is all complete, so when all this uh, uh, code which can change the DAO state is uh, completed, then we are creating a hash. And it's basically one hash by uh, for every block. And we are creating then a chain of these hashes. We are taking always the previous hash for creating the new hash. So we're adding the previous hash in uh, together with the hash of the DAO state to create the new hash. So every hash is uh, is carrying with that the whole history of the chain. So when you have uh, at the specific um, block height, the hash the same with some other node, you can be sure that all the history is the same as well, because when there would be any change uh, of a previous hash, the resulting hash will be completely different as well. So uh, that's no new idea. That's uh, how Bitcoin works basically, or a basic idea uh, of Bitcoin. <coughs> And we are when you start up, you are requesting uh, this dash, uh, this hashes from uh, the seed nodes. So at least from minimum, usually minimum two nodes can be more. Uh, you get already the hashes, and you see if you're in consensus with those. So when you go on these screens of this uh, DAO network consensus or monitoring, uh, you will in the first line when it's red, then you're out of consensus, and you see which nodes are and how many nodes have a different uh, hash and uh, then it depends on the circumstances a little bit more complex uh, how to resolve it but basically the best way would be to just rebuild your DAO state as you can do this in the settings to rebuild from Genesis then you're rebuilding all and when you're still out of consensus then either we have really a consensus issue or one of those nodes which delivering you the data is out of consensus not your fault and it helps you when you see that there's just one node out of five which have a different uh, state, then it's probably not your problem. It's the problem of the other node. When it's a seed node, we can fix it quickly uh, by checking the seed node and maybe restarting it or resyncing it. When it's a random peer, we basically have no way to tell the random peer at the moment. Maybe we can add something to notify him or whatever. Uh, at the moment, in with our test net, uh, we have not seen any consensus issues. So everything looks good. Uh, yeah, and then there are two others. So one is for this DAO state, and then there are two for this peer-to-peer -peer network data for the proposals and for the blind votes. Here, it's a little bit more tolerance possible because it's it can be valid, as I said before, that you didn't never receive one of the proposals, and then you would have a different uh, state uh like uh i think christoph made a screen sharing maybe I show it uh yeah exactly perfect thanks christoph <clears throat> uh you yeah it, it could be valid basically that you didn't receive one of the proposals and then you create a different uh hash because the hash is just created from the list of proposals for this cycle so uh, the proposals get published in the proposal phase when people are making their proposals. 
but we ignore all those because in this time proposals come and go you can remove all the proposal only at the beginning of the blind vote phase we are basically taking a snapshot and we are assuming that all the proposals are well published but as said it's not guaranteed it can be that uh, one or two pro yeah, uh, some proposals uh, doesn't have been well published and then people would have a different state uh, it helps us here to detect this and to find out why they are not well published uh, if we have an issue with the peer-to-peer -peer network or whatever and there's already quite a lot of code to uh, help to avoid this so that yeah to republish your proposal and to, yeah, to get a lot of resilience on that side uh, <clears throat> so far also we have not seen any issue uh, that doesn't really mean as I said that's more tolerance here that doesn't mean that it will end up in a consensus uh, problem because the consensus is done at the result phase and even if you don't have a proposal or too many proposals you can come to the same consensus at the end because those proposals maybe don't count in the result phase or those blind votes or with blind votes exactly the same uh, they are at the vote reveal phase we are making these snapshots where we are creating the hash and here when you out of consensus usually a restart help because with restarting you are requesting the this data again from the seed nodes and when you miss it and the seed node have it then you're in sync again so here it's less critical it just helps us to detect any issue in there on the consensus side for the network mm -hmm. so i think that's uh, at least for me it was very important to be really sure that uh, it's not only by chance that the results are the same for everybody in the vote result, but that really all the data are 100% the same, like it has to be. Uh, we will add uh, those monitorings also to the monitor framework from Florian. I uh, have not discussed with him the details how to do it, but it will have basically similar like here, but more in a broader range, so not only for the seed nodes what you are connected to, but with all seed nodes and maybe even with the whole network and, yeah, and more, more stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, here you get also updated as when with every new block, every peer is broadcasting their hashes to the network. So with all your connected peers, depending how many peers ha have updated now to the new version at the moment, there are not so many, it's only those who are running from source code. <laughs> But uh, basically from all your connected peers, from the nine peers, you should receive also the hashes. And in the best case, you have basically received it from nine peers and zero conflicts. When you have a conflict, you can click on, on it and then you will see this peer. You can request then all the data from the peer because by default, <laughs> uh, from the seed nodes, you only get the, the hashes of the last 10 blocks um it would help to find out that which block the consensus issue happened so when you would then request and you see um yeah at a certain block height uh, the uh, the conflict started then we see okay it happened here and we can investigate uh, why it happened and what's the problem goody any questions to this uh Topic also to the stuff before. Sorry that I didn't uh, didn't make a break and ask you for feedback. Mm, not not from my side. The UI is a little bit uh, technical at the moment. That could need more love, and maybe Christoph has a little bit time to polish it and make it easier to understand. I didn't take a lot of care. For me, it was more important for myself to have a a control about the DAO state. Uh, but uh, for the normal user, I mean, at the moment, I think it doesn't alert uh, because I didn't want to uh, to shock the network when they I want to observe it first if there are still some bugs or whatever. Uh, but probably with the next release, we add something when you're out of sync, especially on the doubt state, that you get a pop up with an alert and you can uh, try to resolve it. That uh, I mean, a basic risk for a user could be when you're on a, on on a different consensus that for whatever reason you get a different result and somebody who requested compensation in your version he got accepted but from the rest of the network he didn't get accepted and he's selling you bsq and you accept it you would accept it but then when you want to send this bsq to somebody else it would be invalid bsq because at the end it was never issued and to avoid something like this it's important that the user can be sure that they are in sync with the network and not getting into this uh, risk zone. 
it's uh, at the end uh, quite a small risk because a lot of coincidence that you would trade with this peer and so on and to get this but if there would be bigger consensus issues would be of course more damage it's basically a terrible damage because there must not be any consensus uh, issue uh, Manfred um, Oscar was asking if uh, what what happens if there is a blockchain a Bitcoin yeah. blockchain yeah that's a good point uh, with uh, with the DAO state, it's actually a valid situation. So it can be that for, I think the deepest reworks on mainnet have been four blocks as far as I know, but Oscar, if you know another number, please let me know. Uh, so it can be that in the worst case, you have three or four blocks, a different state and it's red. That was another reason why I prefer to not make too much alert because this alert should only come when you are continuously after four blocks or so still out of sync then there is an issue because up to a few blocks it can be valid that uh, you are on another chain like another user and uh, then you get a different hash and after the rework is resolved you are back on the same reworks are handled basically uh, by rebuilding the DAO state so when you have a, re a rework you are starting from the latest snapshot try to rebuild it <coughs> And uh, so it should resolve by itself. I've tested it roughly, not 100% maybe, <coughs> uh, but um, should be handled. Uh, for the proposal and the blind vote uh, phases, we are basically only taking the height of the block uh, chain. Uh, so when we're entering the certain height where the, uh, where the blind vote or the vote reveal phase starts, so that shouldn't be related to reworks. We have also the break with the 10 blocks in between. Um, so yeah, there I don't expect any issues with reworks, but um, on the DAO state, it's a valid case that there can be a shallow reworks and then a short time a discrepancy from the DAO state. I still accept, expect that yeah, no, it can happen because the block, uh, the hash will be different and that already creates even because usually you can expect that even with reworks, you have the same set of transactions of BSQ transactions in the block. It, not guaranteed, but it's very likely. But because the block hash will be different uh, from the Bitcoin side, it will be a different hash. So any rework will cause basically a small um, <coughs> short period of uh, consensus issue. And maybe in the UI we should uh, explain this a little bit better because uh, it might be a little bit too shocking for a user when you see something red and not uh, getting the information that it might be a valid case in case of a rework. Oscar, do you know what's the deepest reworks on the Bitcoin mainnet uh, has been in history? Um. No, I don't. Uh, I, I, I don't really know. Um, yeah. I, I know that there was a huge work a couple of years ago because of a bug in, in the Bitcoin source code, and it was a very big, uh, very big fork. But uh, that that was kind of accidental, not. Uh... Yeah. Anyway, I got I got your answer. Yeah. Thanks. Any, anything else? Any question or concerns or ideas or whatever? Uh, not, not so far from my side. Good. Then let's jump to the next. Uh, that's uh, regarding the releases. Uh, as we have a few important features, what we still want to get in for the launch. Uh, mainly uh, a, a new UI where we show facts and figures like the charts about the price development over time, the burn rate over time, the issuance rate over time, maybe some more. Uh, and Christoph is working on this already. Uh, another is to improve the proposal, uh, yeah, the voting view where you can vote on proposals and uh, the result view. At the moment, you need to scroll down, especially for voting. People don't see the button at the, at the bottom for voting and yeah, it's not well done from the UI at the moment. So Christoph will work on this to find a better solution for, yeah, for getting a better overview and better usability. <laughs> Beside that, I'm working on some, uh, started and nearly finished with some 
uh, yeah, to finalize verification stuff, which was never really completed, uh, mainly regarding change parameters and proposals <clears throat> uh, and a few other smaller issues as a try. Basically get our GitHub issue list uh, completed, which are still pending. <clears throat> and I assume we could get from development side more or less ready end of the week, maybe beginning of next week. So, and then we want to, uh, we need a good testing phase because there have been a few important other changes like from peer-to-peer -peer network and from, yeah, we moved to Bitcoin, uh, to the new Bitcoin J uh, branch, the 0147. <clears throat> that shouldn't carry much risk, but yeah, theoretically can uh, carry risk. Uh, uh, so, no, that, that's yeah. not uh, the, the latest release uh, with the SegWit. No, no, uh, the, no. Uh, the fifth of the zero fifteen release, the master from with Segwit support. That's our midterm plan that we as it will take us minimum four or five months to get there. And on the Bitcoin J side, I think things are not really complete and uh, not well tested yet. And especially with support for different for multiple wallets and such stuff. So I don't count that we get this in. Our, also between three and six months, I would estimate roughly. Um, yeah, so this branch, what we have now, it's mainly a kind of like a refactoring branch and a cleanup branch and a few improvements and uh, missing uh, bug fixes, uh, which are supported from uh, Bitcoin master, uh, from Bitcoin chain master, but it shouldn't contain any critical change. So it shouldn't carry any big risk, but of course we need to be sure uh, it requires a little bit more intense testing, but especially on the peer-to-peer -peer network side, we had a few more risky changes. Uh, as we, as developers, are using these versions and have not found big problems, there shouldn't be anything broken. But uh, it's uh, we need to have a good testing cycle for this. So realistically, probably the release might be early or mid next week. Uh, that should be basically then the last feature release. Or, and basically then it's a code freeze for anything critical. And then we need to make another testing round, also another week for testing the DAO features because on the DAO side, there have been for sure some critical changes uh, to be sure that it hasn't broken anything and that we get to a, uh, a, com yeah, to a correct result phase again. Uh, and when there are no bugs or no reason for another release, we will go straight directly to the launch, to the mainnet launch. Otherwise, more likely, there will be another small release with just small bug fixes and small improvements. Nothing critical, nothing risky. Uh, maybe yeah, one and a half week later or another week later. And then we are basically ready for live. And depending on the other to-dos on the organizational side, communication side, infrastructure side, we need to get everything really prepared. And when we feel that we are prepared on every aspect, um, we are ready for launch. And uh, also still an open question how we do the launch. There was some idea to make it a live session, basically, that uh, yeah, people can follow it when we create the Genesis transaction. And then after this, Christoph will push the release. And uh, half an hour later, the release should be out with a new Genesis transaction. Uh, it's still a little bit open question also how how much we want to uh, yeah if it's more a soft launch which is just dedicated to our um community to the BISC users or if we want to make a little bit more uh communication to a broader audience uh, like sending out uh press uh, release uh, messages to journalists or so Probably it's better to keep it uh, low level and uh, focus on, on the BISC users, but we can discuss this still. So yeah, that's the rough plan. So anything bigger like yeah, the API changes, unfortunately, didn't have time at all. So we have to postpone this after the DAO launch. And uh, there's some bigger changes planned on the network, peer-to-peer -peer network side. But as Florian also has at the moment, uh, these issues with the dentist. <clears throat> Uh, he's uh, not fully available and uh, it would be a bigger, riskier change, so we will postpone this as well. And yeah, basically anything which carries some risk will be postponed minimum one month after the DAO launch when everything went fine. Uh, yeah. Um, regarding <coughs> the, the, the launch, Manfred, will we have uh, this closed mainnet test as well? 
Yeah, uh, good to you on my account. This I started already a, a mainnet uh, Genesis uh, transaction <clears throat> with half a Bitcoin just, and it's more a kind of like a small private uh, testing because it's real money. Also, the BSQ is now backed by real uh, Bitcoin, so it uh, spent half a Bitcoin. That's not nothing. <clears throat> and anybody who wants to test <clears throat> and help us, you need to run from source code and so on to be able to test here is welcome and should get in touch. We didn't announce it too much publicly because I think it confused another testers and they don't know where to test and it costs now real money. You have to pay the transaction fee or the Bitcoin mining fee. You have to pay yourself. <clears throat> you have to pay me back then the PSQ when we're done because I don't want to lose the half uh, uh, Bitcoin. <clears throat> and yeah, I prefer to keep it in a small group of uh, developers basically. And it was mainly also to see how it behaves from performance point of view, because here we get really the full blocks with 2000 transactions. So far, I have not seen any issues. Uh, anything yeah, which can break consensus, so the normal testing can be done on, on the normal test net, that there shouldn't be no difference. And as we didn't, we don't need to do super intensive testing on this mainnet. Uh, it's called beta testers so when you, um, when you go to the settings where you can choose the network, where you find the DAO test net, there is now a new one, which is called DAO uh, beta net. That's basically this main net, but this special main net. So it's not uh, mixed with the normal main net. Technically it's Bitcoin main net, but uh, it's separated in own data directory and so on. Uh, yeah, I said, when somebody wants to help us here testing, we have very short phases, just one day one day voting, one day proposal and so on, so that we get a few cycles done before launch. Uh, <clears throat> we don't do intensive testing just to get a few proposals and a few votes and check if everything works okay. And um, as I said, it's mainly focused on performance uh, issues or maybe with reworks because that's maybe a thing what we still should work on to try to mimic reworks on our DAO uh, testnet. Uh, so artificially create a reacts there <clears throat> on on the mainnet when we have some luck there will be some reorg in the in this uh, meantime <clears throat> that's another thing it would be good to have kind of like a monitoring for historical data for reorgs when reorgs happened I'm not sure if that's very trivial and if it, maybe there exist some services where you can look up this but it would help us when we see some issues then we see okay it happened because of a reorg or not so it would be good to have this somewhere, uh, the state available. Um, yeah. Anything else regarding this roadmap? Uh, no, not really, Manfred. The only thing which would be great is um, uh, for these critical changes, um, depending on the Bitcoin J and net layer updates, and also in the P2P network, um, could you or Oscar check the, the test uh, cases that are available if we have to add new ones or if it's already covered by the existing yeah. ones? Just to be sure if we have more people getting involved yeah. in the testing cycles that we are not missing out important stuff. Yeah. Also, I'm pretty sure, but Oscar, correct me if you have another opinion, that are on the Bitcoin side, there's nothing basically, no, there has, I mean, yeah, there, a small change was regarding the re, uh, restart from seed words. Now, before the restart was optional, now it's it's done automatically. And there, yeah, there have been some bug fixes in that area. Um, but I tested this already and uh, <coughs> so I can cover this test for the release as well. But um, I'm not aware of anything which would basically represent the test case, it's just that basically a smoke test that uh, everything works. But as also some users are using the live, uh, the, the master for trading also, I think when there would have been a problem, it would have been a fatal problem quickly that the transaction doesn't um, get created or whatever, and we have not heard anything. Okay, so, so also for the backwards compatibility tests, we don't have to add something special. So just basic trading and arbitration. Yeah. So yeah. It should cover, cover all. Yeah. And on the peer-to-peer -peer network side, um, I also don't think that uh, it will be covered by a new test case, basically smoke testing, <clears throat> that everything goes fine. And as uh, some developers are running all the time, master anyway, I don't expect that there are problems, but 
Uh, yeah. Then I will move forward to this uh, preparations to do list. Uh, I it's just basically a rough to do list. I was wondering to make it more organized in GitHub or whatever, but I basically I want to leave it to anybody who will pick up some of those tasks and work on this. I tried to assign some person when I was sure that when I knew that uh, like uh, Christoph will work on this facts and figures UI. Uh, on other stuff, I left it open to make yeah, to leave it to the people that they uh, put their name to the task to just get basically an overview who is responsible for getting stuff done until the launch and uh, yeah, when something is missing to add it. There are a few areas like development, uh, UI. Uh, my friends, do, do you want to share it or? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, one second. Yeah, you should see it. Yeah, I can see it. Can you, can you see it? Uh, on the development side, as I started already and I've done a few stuff, um, there are still a few tests uh, cases what we should try to test, like creating crazy transaction manually and try to find a way how you can create artificial BSQ or whatever. Hopefully that's not possible, but uh, yeah. And yeah, I think there's not too much missing. Uh, there are quite a few UI things, uh, so that's probably a bigger uh, area where we need a few days to get uh, get this all done. Um, then on the testing. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes. No, no, I, I was already reading for communications. I have, the, I have a question there, but I continue. Please. OK. Yeah, for the testing, I do create transactions to create BSQ or whatever, find any any bug on the consensus side. It's still, for, for sure, a never ending ongoing task and, and challenge. But I uh, think we are pretty good so far. <coughs> um, yeah, this <coughs> invalid parameter changes I did already, not completely complete, but nearly. <coughs> uh, there's open draft pull request for this. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean that that's done already. <coughs> uh, we started already. For the infrastructure, <coughs> everybody who runs a seed node. Uh, they need to start prepare it so that you run Bitcoin Core because the seed nodes will be in full download. So they need to have Bitcoin Core <coughs> with a special configuration. So um, before you start it, uh, <coughs> yeah, you have to check out the, the documents. Uh, also, you need special transaction index enabled. Otherwise, you have to restart again uh, with the syncing, and syncing takes roughly two days. Uh, you need roughly 300 gigabyte of uh, disk size. Uh, it must not run in pruned mode. And because of the transaction index, it's a little bit larger like the normal uh, block uh, chain size. Uh, regarding how much RAM the server or the node will require, it's a little bit um, open question. Florin has fixed the important memory leak with the seed node, so it seems that they are not growing any more memory requirement. I still want to be on the safe side and prefer to pay $10 more a month for this uh, node instead of risking that all the seed nodes are crashing. And uh, because with the DAO, it's much more relevant. They are delivering the blocks for every uh, light node. Most users will run their application in light mode node where they get the PSQ blocks from the seed node. So when the seed nodes are not delivering this data, it's, um, they, yeah, they, they cannot get to the consensus, or they get don't get the they cannot use PSQ basically, so it's much more critical now um, the seed nodes like it was before. So I don't want to save money on their infrastructure side, like uh, <coughs> to pay uh, forty dollar instead of fifty dollar <coughs> to save a little bit on RAM and then risk uh, that we are running out of memory or whatever. So later we can improve this, and Florian will go on to work on this uh, improvements on the seed node that they're. <clears throat> working more stable and um, and that the memory leak is 100% gone. Before we are there, I prefer to just be on the safe side. And uh, then with Florian, yeah, with the monitoring, uh, that's not a showstopper. So we, when 
we don't get there before the launch. We still will launch, but we'll be good to have as soon as possible to be sure on the monitoring side that we have a good view about <coughs> the health of the DAO in the network and especially on the seed node side. Then on the communication side, uh, yeah, one important document uh, which is missing is a kind of like emergency plan. When anything goes wrong, when there is a consensus bug, when it, there's a hack, when there's whatever problem on the DAO, how we basically plan what we are planning to do. And we have a few uh, security features already built in. Uh, for instance, yeah, we can stop uh, trading by disabling BSQ, so nobody can use BSQ for trading anymore. That would help us already when there's any problem that we are basically freezing the funds that nobody can uh, sell or transfer the funds anymore. And we can send out anyway an alert message to everybody so everybody gets notified about this. Uh, another flag is to disable the DAO completely so that DAO is basically, uh, like now, not enabled anymore. <coughs> that will stop the DAO completely in the network. All these flags can be overwritten by, also these flags exist already for other stuff like the update message and where we can uh, ban users when we, like we had uh, these very few chargeback cases, but when there is a clear case that the user was a scammer, then the only address gets banned or that uh, payment methods or currencies get banned like we did with uh, Cash App. <clears throat> and with um, Grin, uh, where we figured out that Grin was not stable enough and then we uh, removed it. And those are kind of like yeah, centralized messages. I'm, I have the key to be able to send out these messages. I only do it for very serious things. Uh, and when I would start to abuse this or whatever, a user don't agree to this, then they can override it by ignoring these developer messages, the program argument. And when they ignore it, yeah, then the network, this message just doesn't exist for him. Uh, but of course, when we figure out there's a big problem in the DAO and we are stopping the DAO and still users start to trade with the DAO because they're ignoring this, then it's on their own risk. And when we have to restart in the worst case, everything over uh, and we have to roll it back in the way how we can do it or whatever it, the, 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 the disaster management will be, we don't take care about those people who ignored these flags because yeah, when we tried to protect them and they ignored it, then it's their own risk. And when they lost money, then we don't care. But beside that, when anybody would lose money because of a bug or because of a hack, we uh, will try to recover it with reimbursing, basically. We also try to freeze such funds when we can be sure there was a hack and we know that he has not moved his funds already, then we try to to confiscate it and block it. Uh, and and for this, it's important to react quickly as when we see there's a hacker who has created the million BSQ out of thin air and he still has not sold it in trades, uh, we can disable the DAO, then basically uh, flag this UTXO as banned, then making a new version out and then he cannot move these funds anymore and basically confiscate it. And of course we have to fix the bug. Uh, so we don't have stupid statement like code is law and then when a uh, bug happening, then we are changing our minds. We make clear when there is a problem, we try to fix it. The intention of the DAO is that it works for the project for BISC as a governance and funding model for transferring value from uh, traders to contributors and making it accessible that everybody can become stakeholder. It's not the intention that the hacker exploit a possible bug. And when the hacker is managing to do this, we do everything in our power to stop this and to, we have to confiscate this. And, our, and in this document, we have to make this very clear <coughs> that there are no uh, stupid discussions afterwards that our people say, no, nah, that's breaking now. Uh, uh, you cannot change history or whatever. Um, then, yeah, we have to make maybe a little bit more clear <clears throat> in some, I don't know where exactly, in some documents probably, that uh, you must not create manually your own transactions, BSQ transactions, or use it from some other wallets and send some BSQ to a tracer or to a, uh, yeah, to any other wallet and, and think you can just move it like another Bitcoin because very, very easily you can burn your BSQ when you don't know exactly what to, what to do. 
And when you do it, it's completely your own risk. When you burn your PSQ, we will not help you. Um, and uh, so we will not accept the reimbursement request for some people who are hacking around and don't know what to do. When they do it, they play with fire and they shouldn't do it basically. Also when they do it, they have really have to study the source code and know exactly the consensus rule. It's not enough to read the tech uh, spec because it's not 100% complete. Uh, you have only the source code is the 100% documentation basically and uh, there are not many people who, who would have the knowledge to do this in a safe way. Even for myself, it would be dangerous and I would be very, very scared uh, to send some PSQ to another wallet and try to send it um, somewhere else. And there is a, in the very early days, I, I did it and I managed it to use a Tracer as uh, for storing my PSQ and figure out how what I need exactly to do, how to send it and back. I don't remember the details again and it will require a little bit more syncing and Maybe at some point we make a very careful document about the exact step because it's a valid use case. Of course, people want to have their BSQ done in a cold storage like a tracer. And uh, it's just a little bit of dangerous area uh, when you don't have 100% control how a transaction is created. Yeah, your BSQ can get burned. And I think it's possible. It just needs a lot of care and a very well uh, tested uh, procedure and document. And even then, I think I would always leave it to the user uh, because, yeah. Also, to, uh, to make it clear to the user, here is our help. But when you do it, it's your risk at the end. Uh, so, over a longer time, maybe we find some <coughs> solution to uh, to support Tracer directly in this, because that would be my or to have some, I don't know yet, uh, I have not thought much about it, but of course it would be good to have some solution for cold storage, uh, which is really safe where you don't need to delegate the risks to the user where you deliver them software, which just works. But that will take a while and uh, will not be on our highest priority. Um, yeah, then basically for the web page, I think we need something uh, for the launch. So the, the updates from some pages and maybe a own page for the launch or whatever. I have not thought about it, but I think uh, that's for sure a bigger to do and we should start to focus on this. On the organizational side, it, uh, feel free to interrupt me. I just move on to the next step. We can uh, afterwards uh, can have a discussion about uh, some details or so, but if you have a burning question, just uh, interrupt me. Yeah, I said this uh, for the seed node operators, they have to prepare already. It takes a few days at least uh, to sync Bitcoin Core. Uh, I started already to send out emails to all past contributors from the original uh, Genesis distribution and collecting uh, the Bitcoin addresses. Unfortunately, I will not have time to get much in contact because many are good friends and I have not been much in touch over time with this. It's a little bit of pity to, to not use this opportunity to uh, catch up with them more, but I'm um, super busy with the door launch. So when anybody is listening of those uh, past contributors, I apologize when I'm not very social now. Um, then yeah, Man Manfred. Did, did you get any response so far? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I have not checked my emails, but for sure, uh, quite a few have already responded and so on. I expect that some might be have changed the email or whatever. So it's still a little bit open question how I deal with the case when I don't get a response. If I should take the old address, what they gave me two years uh, also in summer 2017, I think it was, yeah. <laughs> which is the risk that they maybe have, don't have the wallet anymore. And then we shoot this PSQ and they can never can uh, take the PSQ. Another option is that I take it in escrow basically and uh, keep it. And when they come back then a half year later and say, oh, I missed this and I never got this email for whatever reason, uh, then I still have the PSQ and can transfer it. And maybe that's more safe instead of, of assuming that they still have the wallet and maybe don't have it. So uh, yeah, that's still a small question. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Manfred, maybe we should um, also, Manfred, can you hear me? Yeah, there are a few proposals regarding the bonded roles. So, so which uh, bonded roles we support in the DAO, 
we have in the GitHub issue, we have a lot of roles and it's a, lot, a blurry area. I mean, not every real role in, in the BISC DAO is a, what people are doing is represented as a role in GitHub. Then not all those roles are really relevant that they should be in the DAO. I mean, my, <clears throat> my main rationale when I added the roles to the DAO was which role can theoretically create damage, like the one who controls the domain. Of course, you can create a, a web page like Bitcoin.com and create damage for, for the project like Roger Weir has created for Bitcoin. And then he should be punished by confiscating the bond. A seed node operator who don't care and don't have a stable node creates damage for the network because yeah, it decreases usability. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, confiscation is always the last resort. It's only really for a bad intention and severe <clears throat> violations. Usually we just re remove this when a seed node operator doesn't really care, we remove him and somebody else will take over this node. So it's not so critical. So it's a question how much, how strict we really, I don't assume that anybody of the role operators is malicious. Uh, we only give, uh, um, important thing is that Becoming a role owner will be already a, a, a voting uh, process. So everybody who runs, who has a role, will basically now uh, request the role by voting. And only when he get accepted, then he need to uh, uh, to lock in the bond. And then he's basically officially the role owner. But one issue is that some of the bonds, depending on the amount, uh, how much we require uh, for the bond, which is a little bit problematic as long as we don't know the BSQ price. At the moment, we assume it's $1, but when the BSQ price is $5 or $10, then the bonds are way too high. The bonds are locked in for a long time. At the moment, we don't have a feature that you can basically just unlock and automatically renew the bond with a new <coughs> changed lower required bond amount. So at the moment, you would need to do the voting again, which is a little bit a cumbersome process. Uh, also, I would suggest that we just wait a little bit, a few, two, three months before we starting uh, implement, also uh, using the, the bonded roles. Then also the contributors have more time to earn more funds. We know more what the real price will be, uh, because at the moment some of the contributors who are uh, who are already executing some roles, like running seed nodes, <clears throat> they have not earned so much BSQ that they would. Uh, be able to pay the bonds which are required at the moment. Maybe they're just too high, but maybe it's reasonable because I mean, yeah. You, and it's of course it's always very difficult. What's the maximum damage when I abuse the BISC domain? I mean, is it ten thousand? Is it hundred thousand? Is it a million dollar? It's very hard to say. <coughs> uh, so I would, yeah, it's an open question how we deal with this. But it would be basically good when. We get the when you have time to check out these proposals to see if there is missing an important role. Basically, as I said, I want to limit it to those roles where you can create damage. Also, everything which represents BISC to the outside world, like the Twitter account, the domain, of course, <clears throat> everything which uh, gives you a privileged access, like uh, uh, running the relay node for the notification, mobile notifications. Theoretically, he could try to collect data and abuse this data and yeah, learn a little bit more about their, <coughs> uh, the users like uh, yeah, we want to do. So it has a little bit of uh, trust involved. Uh, yeah, being responsible for an important repository, mainly, of course, the Bitcoin, uh, the BISC <coughs> uh, repository, but other repositories like the Bitcoin J fork uh, or the net layer libraries, the external libraries, which are very uh, essential for our project and which are basically already now, uh, like the net layer is covered by Florian. Bitcoin J is already, Oscar is the, the, the owner basically of that repository already. So that might make sense to add that bond for this because basically we need to trust those persons that this, yeah, they are the owner of the code base there. Uh, but for other roles, like for the docs, I think for the docs page, we don't have a own role because, yeah, I don't think that you can really create a lot of damage. And when somebody would start to uh, publish bad content there, we just 
I mean, the GitHub admin can always revoke the access there, and we can fix this quickly. I think it's not really a risk that uh, can happen to the project. So I would like to to limit. Maybe we have already too many roles defined, and we kick out a few. I tested with uh, changes that we are a little bit flexible. Like the bond amount can be changed without big problems. Uh, <clears throat> We can add new roles. I think I'm not sure if we can remove roles that uh, probably causes troubles um, when they have been used in past uh, uh, in past proposals or voting rounds. Uh, but <clears throat> there's some level of flexibility here. But I think best is to be just or uh, to to just use it where it really helps us when we are we really need it and not overuse it, and maybe start a little bit delayed and slowly, uh, not a hard requirement. We are not. We don't. We are not in the state that completely anonymous role owners take over some roles, and we need this as security because there's no trust relationship. Everybody who who executes a role have a healthy trust relationship because they worked already since quite a while for the project. So there's no reason to assume uh, that it carries any real risk. So yeah, yeah then another. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, um, I also think that it, it's getting more important if, if we have the mediation system in place and, and yeah. trying to get on, on more mediators, which we have not contact, personal contact yeah. with. Yeah, the mediators will be, but that requires the new, uh, the new trade protocol. As soon as this is out, <coughs> there will be a role for the mediator. <coughs> and uh, that's for sure interesting then to get uh, more mediators, and that can be anonymous people at the end. And, uh, and their, their bond is then really important because, of course, a mediator who is not working correctly, uh, he's hurting the project, of course. And uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, regarding the parameter changes, it's another area. I don't want to overuse it that we have for every small details uh, uh, yeah, possible to change it over voting, should be only limited to, to that areas where it makes sense, where we can assume. Yeah, it, it makes sense to change it uh, and would be good that everybody review this proposal to see if anything important is missing then the parameters have a maximum and a minimum change also when uh, when it's allowed to change to the maximum to the to 50 percent of the current value then the maximum decrease is two also you can go down by uh, one over two <coughs> And the maximum increase when it's number three, then it means uh, you can maximum increase it to three times the higher value, like the current value. It always reflects to the current value. So with repeated voting, we can repeat it to change it. So when the maximum and the minimum is two, like for many of the parameters, you can double up or double down with every voting. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, probably the this maximum and minimum uh, limits are maybe too high. I will be, yeah, we'll probably change it to a little bit more conservative values. They, <clears throat> some values have additional protections, like for instance, for the percentage required that the proposal is accepted cannot be below 50%, because it doesn't make sense that you accept something with 20% voting. I think that's not logical. Uh, <clears throat> when a majority yeah i think uh, to have this hard limit you even yeah you cannot go lower even if you can sh can change the <coughs> uh, the required percentage for for most proposals is 50 percent but for some like compensation uh, confiscation requests i think it's 85 percent and for changing a parameter 75 <coughs> percent and when we want to change it to a lower value we can go down a little bit but we cannot go uh, below 50 percent and there are some other uh <coughs> restrictions as well which overrule basically even if you would theoretically be able to change it 20 percent lower and you're already at 51 percent you cannot go lower uh but yeah that would be good that people are reviewing this a little bit because i said also here with the parameters the same we can change this values without hard breaks I mean, the worst case is that uh, I think it doesn't break anything on the consensus side. A user who has not updated might get a different consensus in voting when he would not have accepted one of the proposals because he has an old version where it was in a different limit like it is in a new version. 
but then he's basically on the minority and he needs to update and then he's on the majority again. And when we change something like this, we have to be careful to not do it closely to the vote result phase or wherever where it's more risky with consensus uh, breaking when just a few people have updated and then get the different consensus. And so. But basically it's, it's, it carries some flexibility, but we shouldn't count too much on this. So we should get the, the original values as good as possible that we don't need to change them. Um, and also, I mean, this parameter change, uh, it's basically exceptional. It's not that we, ch now we should play around to find bugs, but when we are live, uh, there should be a strong reason why we really want to change. The only values which might change more often over time are the fees, and especially also then the fee for the arbitrator. Initially, it will be zero, but over time, the, the user with the new trade protocol, they have to pay a higher fee when they want to still have support of arbitration uh, to create a little bit of pressure that people are moving over to the new system. And so such uh, parameters are expected that they will change uh, uh, more uh, frequently. Other should, yeah, we should avoid to change it because at the end, all those changes could lead to a consensus bug when we miss something in testing and uh, better to not risk it when it's not really required. That's why they have also a very high quorum and very high percent, uh, threshold. Threshold is called the required percentage. Quorum is the required BSQ uh, for voting. So when only when the, the, the quorum is 100,000 BSQ and only a few people have voted on this at all, and it's only 50,000 BSQ which was used in the stake, then it will be rejected. <coughs> then yeah, the list for the Genesis distribution, my task. Um, yeah, we still need to discuss a little bit. We had already in the past a discussion about how we are treating the contributions from the contributors who have participated in the, uh, in the voting and in the, yeah, after the Genesis launch. And we had some discussions regarding this. Uh, we'll keep this a little bit up for closer to the launch, but we want to apply some factors that those who have contributed over long term that they have proven that they're very uh, uh, yeah they, they stick to the project uh, and and those contributions who are leading more into the past uh, that they get the, uh, yeah that they get the a factor that was also <coughs> uh, applied in the original Genesis distribution. It's like a bonus in a company, those people who worked, who who have been there from the very beginning and took more risk. And at the end, every contributor is like a shareholder in a company. Everybody just get paid in this uh, kind of like equity. Uh, so everybody takes some risk. And those who have taken the risk one and a half year ago, the risk was much higher that, um, like now. And also those who have contributed over the whole time they delivered a higher value like other contributors who have just worked for one or two months and then left again, then the contribution didn't help so much because it takes some onboarding effort and so on. Um, and we want to reflect this in the, uh, in this contribution of the past one and a half year. <coughs> um, yeah, we still, I'm not sure if we do it before the launch or after the launch, but I uh, would like to distribute a little bit more the current node operators. I'm still running a little bit too many of the nodes and uh, yeah, I would like to distribute this a little bit better. I don't want to put too much effort into this and especially with the seed nodes, I prefer to have more uh, direct access when there are some issues I can fix it quickly and don't. Uh, I'm not depending on uh, somebody else who is maybe sleeping and then I have to wait 10 hours uh, before we can get get it fixed or so. So that's still open question, but uh, basically there are a few non-DAR related areas like the notifications relay, the markets page, the providers nodes, which are, I'm happy that when I find somebody who take over this uh, areas, so it's a little bit of... Uh, time consuming for me. I mean, some are not time consuming at all, like the notifications relay, but the market page uh, at every release, I need to make a small update there and so on. And I would be happy when somebody else take over this. Uh, 
Ma Manfred? Yeah. Running, running the seed nodes and provider nodes. Um, is this documented as somewhere uh, how to set it up? Or is this, does, also, yeah. the question I want to ask, does it, does it need someone who has an engineering background or is it yeah. open for? So, no, I, I want, uh, it's not that it's so complicated, <clears throat> but it's just when you have some issues, as I want to have developers for these nodes, because it's just easier when there are some problems to get it fixed and to, to have some good uh, OPSEC uh, background, people who have some good Linux background and so on, and to not run into trivial problems. <coughs> and uh, I mean, the, the only critical nodes which caused more troubles was the C node because of mainly of this memory leak and so on. Uh, and also because they are more critical for the net for the network. They're not super critical. And once I had really a, a big problem where all C nodes were dead because of out of memory problems, uh, even then this, the network recovered uh, as long as there are other nodes who, which are live uh, for a longer time so the data is not vanishing. It's just a uh, usability decrease when a new node starts and all the C nodes are down. Yeah, then he needs longer to get the data and so on. And when it's a completely new node, of course, he cannot connect at all to the network and he need to ask for some onion addresses on the forum or wherever. But uh, provider nodes are very low, uh, no, uh, so there's basically nearly no maintenance needed there at all. It's simple to set them up. They are very, don't have a lot of uh, resource requirements. Market page is a little bit a bigger effort or and as said, notification relay is super similar, like the provider notes, even lower. Um, yeah, the documents are, because it's so simple at the end, you, at the end you just check out GitHub, you start your node with a few program arguments, that's it. And because most of those nodes, we don't need 20 people for those uh, provider nodes. Uh, I think I have two remaining, which I want to delegate. So basically when I find one or two developers who are taking over those, it's fine. It's not worth to write the document for this. It's easier to send them the list of program documents I used, and that's it. Notification really is even easier. The only bigger thing is the markets, but that's also it's a handover, and it's only one person who will run this. <coughs> and with the seed notes, I would want to wait until Florian has, um, he has done already a lot of improvements, also how to run the node as a service and so on. <coughs> and um, I want to wait a little bit until this is complete and then uh, we can distribute it a little bit broader. And because of the risk for the DAO, because they're very relevant for the DAO launch, I'm not sure if it's a good idea when I try to distribute it too early and then maybe have more risk when there's any issues. So probably it's better that I keep my four seed nodes and then after the DAO launch, I try to distribute this more. <coughs> yeah, there. Um, there's one open, we had a few discussions already, mainly with Devin, <clears throat> how we deal with the proposals, what you do on GitHub. And theoretically, you could change the content of the proposals and then hi historically it would be good when people can look up the proposals <clears throat> and can see what people have voted on. And at the moment, because it's out of the system, it's on GitHub, <clears throat> basically the, at least the GitHub administrator always could change history. Uh, later, so it would be good to have uh, some secure way that a hash basically of the version which was used at voting. So as soon as voting starts, blind vote phase starts, <coughs> that we create and freeze the content of the proposals with a hash and then the hash is somewhere committed or whatever. And then uh, <coughs> we, we can be sure that it cannot have been changed afterwards. At the moment, uh, yeah, the the issuer can change it himself. He always have right access for his proposal. <clears throat> I was considering maybe to use a pull request, but then it's a little bit more complicated. People have to make a fork of the project and non-developers, for, for non-developers, it's a little bit more challenged, like to make an issue on GitHub. I think that's a very low barrier. Making a pull request, it's a little bit, <clears throat> requires a little bit more knowledge about Git and so on. Um, also, it's then the question where, in which format we are committing, it's also not really a good solution. <clears throat> I don't want to to bridge it too closely that uh, it becomes part of consensus or whatever. I think it, it's good enough to have basically a separate system where we get, it could be basically a script, which is just uh, 
uh, downloading the proposals at their block height when the blind boat starts, then they get frozen, they are archived somewhere, and then a hash is committed maybe even to the blockchain, and then we have a transaction where this is 100% frozen, and everybody can run. Could be a small service, basically. Everybody can run such a service. We run one, which is then available at some address. Everybody can view then all this historical data, and when somebody doesn't trust us, uh, or the one who is running this, uh, he can run it himself. Something like this, I think, is good enough. And then we have basically this commitment, and it's then a social commitment. Also, everybody can agree that, uh, yeah, the version is correct. When, yeah, when any <coughs> any uh, anything happened, would anything would happen that um, the one who is running this would cheat and rewrite history? Then everybody else could run it and could detect this problem. So, I think that would be good enough. We don't need to have it. In the DAO code that basically we would use then the hash of the <coughs> of the GitHub page and then put it into the into a transaction or whatever. At the moment, I think there's no good place where we could put it in. Also, any change would yeah, it's complicated to change anything in the consensus code uh, with backward compatibility. <laughs> uh, so, and I don't want to make it more complicated complex and complicated like it is already. <clears throat> so, and I don't see a hard requirement for this. I think the DAO also <clears throat> always depends <clears throat> on social consensus that people are doing their due diligence. For instance, another example is people could make, two people could make a, a, a proposal for changing a parameter for two different values, like changing the, uh, <clears throat> the, the fee, the trade fee, uh, <clears throat> one is changing maybe to 10% uh, higher and the other is changing to 20% higher. And both could be basically get voted okay with the majority. That would cause uh, an error in the result and basically the whole vote uh, round would be invalid then because it shows that we have a social consensus bug that we are not thinking when we are voting. When the majority of the voters have voted for both okay, then they have not thought what they vote because they cannot agree to yeah to a conflicting result that they say at the same time no it should be changed to twenty percent and at the same that they say uh, it should be have changed to ten percent um, yeah that would show that people are just voting randomly and, and uh, don't think about it and we have to fix this on a social level basically and I would see this with this uh, yeah to be sure that the proposal have not been changed in a similar way we have to to do our due diligence and control this. Uh, and also, I mean, when somebody would fake this with whatever, it's a question what he can gain. He would very quickly lose completely his reputation and never get accepted any proposal in future anymore when it's done with bad intention. So I think it's, uh, I don't see real risk there and it's a little bit complex how to do it right, but it's an open task where basically we should find a solution for this but I would prefer basically to have a kind of like an out of, out of DAO system, subsystem, which is handling this, like I said, like a script, which is just getting the data and archiving it and taking care of the hashes and so on. And it can be a, any developer who wants to work on this or can be done any time after the DAO, it's not critical. But <clears throat> when somebody else has it, I mean, it's good to have at least some idea how we want to do it and that this idea really works and makes sense and so on. Uh, so that's basically my task before we launch to have more or less a clear idea. And then when we implement the idea is probably not critical. So if you have any, uh, yeah, any to add there, or another idea or whatever, because maybe there are really, there is another idea to bring it in into the DAO and then it's everything which will affect the DAO, especially consensus has to be done as soon as possible. It's already very late now. <coughs> yeah. Do you have anything to add to discuss um, something what I forgot? Feel free, I think, or when you don't have access to the document, uh, just ping me. I hope I sent it to everybody already. Uh, but uh, feel free to just add it in the document assign your name when you uh, are able to take uh, responsibility of this task and yeah
That sounds great. Thanks, thanks for us putting all this together, Manfred. Yeah, and as soon those get uh, stroke out more and more, we are getting it's our countdown basically. As soon, yeah, we are ready. I think realistically, in the best case, we could be ready in two weeks. More realistically, it's probably three weeks. But I think when nothing critical happens, I think three three weeks is a realistic do uh, launch date. That will be then. Uh, roughly the first or second week in April. Around the DAO launch time, I would be happy when most of, at least those people who have a more <coughs> important role in around, in, uh, around the launch is available that when uh, anything critical happened that we can react quickly. Uh, yeah, it's, as I said before, it's still a little bit the question from the communication strategy, how <clears throat> how far we go out, if we want to keep it more uh, a soft launch in our community, or for instance, if we want to make a, a press release, sending it out to journalists as well. I'm, I tend more to the soft launch, low risk option, uh, and, and then when everything goes, went good and everything was successful that we're slowly trying to uh, increase our reach, but <clears throat> I think from the basic communication side, we are pretty good now <clears throat> from the documents. And I think from testers, I don't, uh, Steve, uh, do you have some data how many people have uh, have uh, participated in the survey, in the feedback and so on, so that we have an idea how many people really have yeah, tested it out and so? Yeah, we have, I mean, right now just one. Uh, for the survey, but uh, I haven't pushed it out. I think as soon as this proposal phase is over, I'll, I'll push it over to uh, all the people who have participated to get some more data. Um, so yeah, yeah not, not, I mean, the survey, right I think it was not included in the code in the in the last release. Yeah, I think it's, 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 it, it's right now in master, I think. It, yeah, it, 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 I think it's only one week or so that we merged it. <clears throat> So uh, it's only a few people who are running, it's not too many people who are running from source code. And those are usually the people who are already active and developing, they're probably not doing the survey. So, so we, we have we have several people, I think probably between 10 and 20 people or, who have participated in this round and the last round who are completely new. So I'll yeah. immediately reach out to them so that they can uh, do the survey uh, for. for yeah, time. yeah, that would be great. Uh, I mean, you have uh, also covered a lot of when people were requesting PSQ for testing. Do you have a rough gut estimation over the last, how, how many, also from the non-developers, how many new contributors or uh, users, traders have participated in the testing, 30, 40, 50? Um, I think new people, probably 20, 25. Okay. Would be a good estimate for right now, uh, over the past two weeks, yeah. three weeks. Uh, and from the contributors, probably 20 all in all. Yeah, so I would say we're probably around 50 total among mm -hmm. both uh, contributors and users. Yeah. I mean, I've seen from the number of proposals, the number of votes, it was 20, 30 at each round. Yeah. Um, which is, uh, which was our target, basically. We didn't want to get too many. Yeah, it's, I think it's more or less in the range what we what we targeted. It's hard to say. I mean, it would be good to find out how how many of our traders really know about the DAO. How many we have reached? That would be an interesting number. But it's I don't have a good idea how we how we manage to figure out this. Uh... Yeah, one thing one thing I would uh, like to suggest if we could. Um if we could somehow make the maybe just add some additional blocks and, and make it so that the uh the proposal phase is goes from like wednesday to friday instead of thursday through saturday because the sure, last yeah, day it's uh, really it's really hard to reach people on saturday for, sure uh, sure yeah uh, yeah uh, just remind me i, I will uh, push it up a little bit i can speed up the time also from 10 minutes of nine minutes or whatever and then we are making a little bit faster the phases yeah, maybe I don't know if one week is maybe uh, also maybe not a bad idea to speed it up a little bit now to get. That should be okay. Yeah. Also, it uh, 
creating a little bit more load or I mean the yeah <clears throat> so it yeah mm -hmm. I think I maybe speed it up to maybe even five minutes that uh, for the half of the time then it's three days and a half more or less the cycle duration or is it too much mm -hmm. It's a little bit of a question. People are missing their vote reveal. It's, I think at the moment it's one day, half a day is too short. Uh, I think we one day we need to leave for the vote reveal. And I think it's with the current time, it's one day. So we cannot go too short because otherwise, yeah. I think it's two days to, right now. It's two days? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Blocks. I will check out uh, when, I think, uh, we can go down to one day basically because uh, yeah. yeah when when you're active in one day you manage to and if not it's also not the end of the world <coughs> okay uh, anything um, else uh, or otherwise no i just just checked uh, the the referrals uh, that we are passing on for the docs uh, website from the desktop client where we linked uh, from the DAO uh, links within the client and i think it's about 103 users who how many who, who, 100 100 103 users who visited uh, the doc site from after uh, selecting a link uh, regarding the DAO within the client and do you see how many users in general have visited the DAO doc site that would be a good number as well and, uh, with, uh, in total you mean uh, yeah over the last months at least uh, how okay. many people? Well, how many people have 50, watched the video? Saying huh? fifty thousand. Uh, no, since January, it's it's fifty thousand users. Uh, can can uh, I look just since for February? Docs, as a, for the doc site. Uh, so, so, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I, I was on the website. <laughs> sorry. As a, the, um, as the special as the doc site for the DAO. As the the main uh, starting point for the DAO. <laughs> Let or me and as well for the videos, maybe uh, Steve, maybe you can check on YouTube what's the statistics to see how how many views we had on their introduction videos. I think that gives a good number of the people who have really uh, have become interested to understand. That video is around 300, two, 275, 300 for the intro video. Mm. So those are maybe the, the users. Uh, yeah, I think from those numbers, probably we can derive more or less the users what we have reached who are who got interest in the DAO and maybe hopefully understand it more or less. So, yeah, it's a sync. Yeah, the number of downloads uh, is between five and 10,000. So, when we reach 500 users, we have something like five to 10%. Yeah, it's maybe a little bit below our. Our target, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think in that direction we can try to push a little bit. Or I mean, the, I think for me the highest priority is to get everything prepared and everything done. But when there is still time on the site to yeah to go on to push to reach our users because it seems that we have not reached them very well when we only have maybe two to five percent at the moment with three hundred. Users from ten thousand or five thousand. That's not. That's um, not a lot. Manfred, what about what about using just for once uh, the the messaging, just the centralized messaging system, to to get a message uh, out? Or do you think it's yeah. kind of problematic then, because it can't yeah. click on the link? <laughs> At the moment, the UI is pretty ugly, and I think it comes in red like an alert, and the the title mm -hmm. is fixed with alert. So we can do it for this release mm -hmm. to fix this, to make it more configurable or to make it just more beautiful and that it doesn't come like an alert, that it's just like a message. Then I'm fine, uh, but that we, ha we have to do in this release and only send out after this release, otherwise it's more, yeah, at the moment it's a little bit, uh, as far as I remember, it's just a red alert uh, with, with a straight red and, and I think you cannot yeah. edit the title. You only can edit the text. Um, yeah, and I think also the problem is that uh, we don't support kind of clickable links. It's just plain text. So yeah, might also be I mean, issue. yeah, it's uh, it. I mean, can be done, of course, but it uh, the alert system 
yeah, it's it's an effort which uh, maybe not worst effort at the moment mm -hmm. to and basically I didn't want to overuse this because I said it's this it's this uh, developer messages the update is one part of this I only want to really use for uh, for stuff which really is so important that nobody complains about it when um, people would feel yeah, I get now all the time I update messages and are interested to get notified then they start to use this flag and then we don't have any way like blocking a, a, a currency or yeah then we lose the this power tool uh, what, what we also could do manfred is uh with the next release just open a pop-up with a don't show again or just yeah, yeah. It, yeah don't show again okay so, so so we can also use kind of <laughs> pro proper links to click and yeah yeah that's a good point yeah i think that would be good to have uh just something like yeah that this is basically the last release plan last planned release before the DAO launch now it's the last time please check out when you have not learned it's a very important thing for the BISC project to get it really decentralized and so on yeah some good text some good ui uh, uh so good uh, design for this uh i think that would be a good idea yeah and um, yeah, I think we said we could, and then have some clear links uh, to the, maybe with some small thumbnails to the video and uh, to the docs, just two links, one for those who want to read and the, and the other who want prefer to watch videos. <coughs> and uh, hopefully we manage to, to root a few more people over. Um, and what's your opinion about uh, how do you think we should make something like a press release, for instance? Uh, personally, I, I, I kind of agree with you. I think we should be as um, careful as possible to start with. And then I think after a month or so when it's going well, I think we can try to push it more. There's, there's so much there's so much negative sentiment from certain yeah. people about DAOs in general. And I think making a big deal about it, if anything goes wrong, even slight issues, people are going to make, they're going to exaggerate. Yeah, um, exactly. But. Yeah. But at the end, I think it was only this Francis Poulon, so this uh, Canadian guy. I have not really seen, and at the end, many, uh, many others, maximalists have, have then uh, pro uh, defended us against, uh, with him. I have not really saw any support for his side. Do you, are you aware of some other uh, yeah, maximalists yeah. Who, have, who have been very negative? I mean, he's definitely the most vocal one. I think, I mean, personally, I think there's been a, a bit of a shift in sentiment over the past maybe month, month and a half. Um, there, there have been several events. I think people are realizing that governance in general is just a big, big deal. And uh, any approach to, to fix that when it, with respect to uh, decentralized exchanges and KYC and all that is is uh, is a good one. So I think the I think uh, like for example with that Mr. Hodel guy on Twitter, I, I've sensed a little bit of a shift in his in his approach. He's been a lot more vocally uh, in in favor of BISC and what we're doing with the DAO. So I don't know about Francis particular in particular, but I think uh, I think the the sentiment overall has become more positive. Yeah. And I think he didn't repeat anymore. It was a one-time shot where he was very negative, and then he stopped or discussing. Yeah, I even met some people, and uh, when I was at, in Boston, there was a couple of people who work with him, who know him personally, who are who, who said that they were trying to convince him about the Bisque DAO and that it's not really what he thinks it is, and all that. So I think he's it, it's uh, it's something he'll just have to he'll slowly realize. He's the only one. Yeah, we'll yeah, it was actually pretty good because I mean it's a, it was a difficult challenge to to get this message for this group communicated correctly, and I got the feedback actually from other uh, con yeah from some people that uh, that uh, we did a very good, you mainly uh, did a very good job for communicating that it doesn't come over like uh, any ICO scam or whatever. But of course, yeah, people are different, and some don't get it and uh, don't read stuff, and then have to, to quickly their own opinion. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> um, 
Yeah, so let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's maybe keep with our goal to just focus that we reach our, our users. I think that we maybe need a little bit more push. I, I, my goal would be at least 10% of the traders, so roughly would be between 500,000 uh, users of BISC that they have basically visited either the videos or the docs or both. Uh, of course, we don't know it, the details because we don't do any evil tracking. But when we see that 500 people have visited the videos, we can be, we probably not many are visiting two times or three times the same video. Goody. Um, then let's wrap up here. Huh? Yeah. If you, yeah, if you have anything special in the detail, uh, just get in, uh, ping me and so on. We can, uh, Go on directly, but would be great. Uh, yeah, if anybody who works on some areas put your name on it, so we get a little bit of overview of what's not covered, and uh, to yeah, to not, and especially not to miss something important that we are not two days before the launch. Uh, then we should have done this, and <coughs> then have to delay it or whatever. Okay, then thanks everybody for uh, participating and. As said, yeah, the next release, uh, probably more realistically, it will be early next week. Well, Christoph, what's your estimation? Uh, do you think that's the biggest chunk of the UI work? Yeah, I guess so. Mid of next week, beginning mid of next next week, I will try to yeah. get everything done until end of this week. And if it's if it's a lot of testing, we'll need one two days. Per, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe one one day in intensive testing. Yeah would be good to get a little bit more tests as I think last release uh, Christopher was uh, it's basically always Christopher and Devin and sometimes myself when I have enough time but I think over the last releases there have not been many other tests as well Christopher um, I don't think so on the, on the Devin correct me if I'm wrong on test but I think that there were not not any uh, other testers but what we can do this time to do kind of proactively, create a couple of, of test links uh, for the testing tool and post it so people can just pick it up. Or, yeah, or the one thing is that that the areas okay. are, so when somebody has done a certain pull request that he get it assigned for testing. Uh, so I think that's uh, that at least the developers are participating a little bit more. Yeah. And it would be also good to get some other non-developers uh, like Humad maybe or Alexi or some other people who are doing other stuff usually to invite them to help us testing, just normal user testing. It doesn't need to be the more complicated test, just like the, yeah, to uh, take a little bit away the, the workload from your side that you are not so fully blocked uh, in this time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, 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 let's let's try to push it out more proactively this time. Um, but yeah, let's let's aim for for Monday, Monday Tuesday to start testing. Uh -huh. Maybe then, next week. Maybe you can give a little bit, or you or Devin or both can give a little bit of you about the testing uh, tool again, that it's easier for people to get started with. Yeah, uh, sure. Not complicated, but uh, just a refresher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Goody, then let's wrap up one and a half hour, way too long. Hey, thanks everybody for watching and uh, see you next week. Bye. All right. See ya. <laughs>